We call two Big shots. Out. Sometimes it's and with you, you guys, guys sometimes, sometimes it takes two, two shots. shots. Good, Good morning. morning. Uh, uh, again, again, hey, we're excited. excited. Uh, what, uh, what a great, great day it is, and I'm honored and privileged to be able to stand before you today and share uh, something that God has laid on my heart. Uh, thank, thank you, Pastor, uh, for giving me the opportunity and sharing your pulpit. Don't we have one of the greatest pastors on the planet? Can we honor him this morning? We're blessed to have him back this week. Uh, do me a favor, just turn to your neighbor and say, I've waited all week to sit next to you. Even if it's a lie, it's okay. It's church. It's okay. Hey, if you, if you have, have your Bibles, Bibles turn with me this morning to uh, 1 Peter. 1 uh, Peter, Peter chapter, chapter 2, if you don't have uh, a Bible or a device with uh, the, the scriptures, scriptures on it today, it'll be on the screen for you. Uh, we're going to look in 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. It says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocr hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. The chosen stone and his chosen people coming to him as a living stone rejected, indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. His, his own special people, people that you may proclaim, proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who once were not a people but are now the people of God. Who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. And as we read God's word, this morning I want to talk to you about community. And, and as, as you came in, you should have received the stone this morning. If for some reason you did it in after service, as you go out, you can grab one. If for some reason it captures your heart. And I've heard about 374 times today are we stoning the pastor. I hope not because I'm the one standing here. Um, I would prefer you throw rotten fruit or if you don't like what I say, you can just get up and gently walk out uh, instead of throwing stones at me. Uh, but in a few moments, this will come into play. And I hope that you will grasp a hold of what God is trying to say to us today. Some of our language here at Greenville First is, and you'll hear us say it often, is family. And we believe that we gather together as a family. We believe that we're interconnected together as a family, as a group of believers that have chosen to worship here because God placed it on our hearts that this is where we should be. That this is the family of God that we should be a part of at Greenville First. So we're here to worship together. That makes us a community. The world is filled with all types of communities from where you live in to the type of job that you have to where you work. To the coffee house that you so frequently visit. We won't name any, but there are plenty that many of you that are addicted to coffee and we'll pray for your deliverance today uh, by the end of Bullard and McDonald's that you love. Um, <laughs> but we're all a part of a community. But today, when we walk out of this room, our ultimate goal is to understand why we're a part of a community. Why has God put together a community in us at Greenville First? And why has God put together us a community as a fellowship of believers around the world? Last night, unified Greenville. Thousands of teenagers came together in the Bond Secure Wellness Arena because God placed on the heart of a few teenagers that there needed to be unity among the believers in Jesus Christ. And they began to... Work and they began to pray and they began to talk and people began to get behind them and put together an amazing night last night of worship and the word and life change that took place in the Mall Secure Wellness Arena. A community of believers that gathered together for one purpose to glorify God and to grow in Him. And it came together. So, what is the purpose of community? And as we go through today, again, our ultimate goal is for you to walk out today, understanding why God has you as a part of this community. 
at Greenville First, why God has you a part of the community of believers. And let me preface, any illustration that I use today is not a political forum. It has nothing to do with recent events that have happened um, in our country or world. It's simply the fact that, I know some of you are on now, what he's going to say. Um, it's simply the fact that I prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to give me an illustration that would be so gripping in our mind that we could not forget what community is about. So anything that I say, again, is not a political forum. It's not my opinion on anything or my stance on anything that's happened in the world today. But let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to have his way in the service today, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. The strong and mighty Son of God, we ask that as we go through your word today, that Father, your Holy Spirit would reign in this place, that our eyes would be open, that our ears would be attentive, and that, Father, you, we would hear what you're trying to say to us today. Father, not, let it not be words of a man, and God, may it not be us hearing the words of a man, but hearing the words of our Father in the heavens above about the community that you've placed us in and what that looks like and how we help fulfill what you have to do through our community. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ, the strong and mighty Son of God, we pray. Amen and amen. I have a confession up front that every day when I go home, there's something I have to do at night before I go to bed. And my mind is constantly ADDDDDDDDD. Uh, it is constantly running. It never stops. And the one way I wind down is I sit down and I watch mindless uh, television. Even if I'm not watching it, it's just on. I watch things like Deadliest Catch. Um, I watch things like Swamp People. Uh, some of you are judging me now. I like the outdoors. I like fishing and hunting. I like eating things. And I'm good with that. Uh, but uh, I like to watch, thanks to my beautiful bride, I like to watch cooking shows for some reason, although I can't cook. Uh, she does, and I uh, imagine what those things look like. Uh, there, there's lots of things that I like uh, to watch, but sometimes I flip through and I'll find myself on the Discovery Channel. Uh, not very often, but uh, every now and again. And I came across this show, and I tried to find a clip, which we'll show you in just a moment, uh, of this show. I'm not sure if it's the exact same one, but I remember this show because as I flipped on the channel, the host of the show was so passionate and excited about what he was seeing and encountering in that moment. And as he's there in the bush of Africa... And he's, and he's so, so excited, excited and, and, and he, he, he gets, gets in this whole thing. thing. It's never been seen, hardly ever seen before footage. A rare opportunity for us is we have the cameras rolling of these three or four lions that surround this buffalo. And we're going to see nature at its best, the food chain at its best as these lions attack this buffalo. And then out of nowhere, this group, this family, this community of buffaloes come in, chase off the lions, and save the one, one buffalo. buffalo. And you look at that, and again, that has nothing to do with recent events. I don't have a stance on that. Well, I do, but I won't tell you what my stance on that is. If it is not a place for that, so I will not do that. But there's a couple lessons to be learned in that when we think about community. Number one, number one is this, that single prey are more likely to be attacked instead of a pack of prey. So if you're a part of a family and you remove yourself from that family, you're more susceptible to an attack than you are if you're a part of the family, if you're a part of the community, and if you're a part of the group. Another lesson for me that I've learned and I've lived and I've experienced as a part of your family here is this, is that if you are attacked, if it for some reason the enemy has his claws in you, if for some reason you're facing insurmountable odds that you have a family that will come to your aid, that will love you and that will support you. So there's a lot that we can learn in that, but I don't think it's by chance that even in nature, that we're pointed to the power and the significance of a community. I don't think that's by chance at all. All you have to do is, as I did, turn on the Discovery Channel, and before long you'll see some kind of indicator that points us to the power, the significance, and the validity of a community. And the lesson is very obvious to me here is, that, is this, is that we walk, as we walk through life today, 
as we do life together as a family. That unless you stay in a pack, unless you stay in a community, unless you stay as a part of the family, then you are very susceptible to an attack. But it's when we group together, when we love together, when we do life together, when we do ministry together, when we fulfill God's plan and purpose together, that we are so much stronger. We're less likely to be picked off by the enemy, the one who's trying to kill us and destroy us if we find ourselves as a part of a community instead of a lone ranger trying to do life by ourselves. The world and the culture of today are picking off people one at a time. Each one that is picked off is added to a new community. We hear the stories and the stories and the stories and the stories from national speakers and pastors that are taking different stances now based on decisions that are made. One by one, they are compromising. Even in our lives, we begin to compromise, but the truth is that the Word of God is true no matter what anybody else says. And we take that stand and we live on that stand, but they're slowly, one by one, being picked off. It's a community of culture that keeps taking us further and further from a life with Christ and the purpose that we're created for. So we're all going to be a part of a community. Are we a part of the community? That's the way we were created and built. Are we going to be a part of a community that's moving and advancing the kingdom of God ahead? Or are we going to be a part of the community of the culture and of the world today where we just fit in? Just as nature shows us, community brings, a, brings protection and support to those that are part of the community. And today, the word church that we use so often in life is synonymous with the word community. Together, as a family, as a community, we are the church. It's in community in the church that we experience multi facets, multiple facets uh, of God's purpose for us. The first one we just briefly went over, which is support and protection. That's just one part. If we go all the way back to the beginning in Genesis chapter 1, we'll begin uh, to see another aspect of community. As it even began with God himself. God sitting in a room or he's sitting in heaven and he's saying, all right, let us make man in our image. Now, let me clarify here. God is the only one that can sit there and say, let us make man in our image, and he is alone. If I'm in my office and I'm talking to myself about us and we, and Dan walks by, Dan's going to walk straight to the desk, pick up a telephone, make a phone call. Before long, there's going to be a van that pulls up out front of the church. There's going to be a couple guys that jump out, come in with a jacket, wrap it around me, throw me in the van, take me to a facility, place me in a room until a psychologist can come. God is the only one that can say us and we and our. But he sits there and he says, let us make man in our image. And what can we learn from that? What can we really learn from that? What we really understand is this, is that God is a triune God. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and we know that. But what we learn from that is this. Is that even from the beginning, as he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune God, he's a community within himself. He is not alone. There is a community, a family already of God himself. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He says, let us make man in our image. How important is community to God? I would say it's the utmost of importance to him if he is a community in and of himself. And that, and that takes, takes us all the way back, back to the passage where he says, let us make man in our image. And if we're in, made in the image of God, and he's saying, okay, I'm going to make man in my image. And if my image is community, then man is created for community. I don't think any of us in this room can say that I'm created to be by myself. I'm created to do life alone. I don't think any of us in this room or anywhere in this world can do life by themselves. We are designed for community. You are interconnected and interdependent beings intended for relationship and intimacy. God created us for relationship and intimacy, number one with him, but number two with others. And we cannot do that alone. The Bible says in Proverbs 18.1, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desires. He rages against all wise judgment. God has intended from the very beginning that every single one of us live as a part of a community. The term church we use as a community is centered around Jesus. Jesus came to this earth, why? 
He came to this earth that we may know and have a personal relationship with the Father in the heavens above. And in doing so, he began. With his death, he began a community of believers that now have a right to have an intimate, personal relationship with Jesus Christ because he came as our sacrifice. If we go back to the beginning of time, we look and we see, okay, God creates everything. He creates the planet. He creates what it looks like. He creates what's on it. He creates the animals and the trees and the water. He creates Adam, and he's there, and everything is perfect. Sin has not entered the world yet, and Adam is there. And it seems like he has everything imaginable. He has oceanfront property. He has mountain property. For some of you in this room today that love this, he had organic food. He had all the pets that he could ever want. He named them all. But yet God says, there's something that's missing. In all the perfection of Eden and Adam's initial existence, God says there's one thing that's not good. Everything is perfect. It's sinless. And it's perfect in that moment, yet God says one thing is not good. Adam is by himself. Adam is by himself. And I want you to hear the words of God this morning. It is not good for man to be alone, and he's not just talking about a spouse. He's talking about in life and community together. It is not good for man to be alone. We're designed for community. We're designed in the image of God who is a community in and of himself. So as we're here, I need you to humor me for a few minutes. And I'm going to play the part of an attorney. And you're going to play the part of a jury. And today I'm going to share my heart. For the next few moments, and I'm going to try to convince you of this idea of community. And when you walk out of this room, you will have to choose as the juror, as you sit here, do you believe what he has said is from the Word of God? Do you believe what he said is for us today, or will you walk out and just abandon that? As we sit here today, ladies and gentlemen, my question to you is this, why do you exist? Why do we exist? Why has God chosen for us to walk the earth today? To walk this purpose? What is his purpose and plan for us walking the earth today? I would urge you to think about this. That his purpose and plan for us, number one, is fellowship with him. And number two is to reflect the image of God. We walk the earth today because we fellowship with God, our Creator, and because we're here to reflect the image of our God. This is where we find our greatest fulfillment in life. This is where we find our truest meaning. If we reflect the image of our Creator, we find ourselves in a proper place filled with meaning, positioning, and purpose that God has created us for, which is reflecting His image. Now, having that we have established a few minutes ago that God is three in one, we must con conclude that it's impossible to fulfill man's purpose alone. For God himself is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if mankind is going to reflect an accurate and truest sense, then we have to conclude today that this, it's impossible to fulfill the ultimate purpose and plan God has for us alone. The only way to fulfill his plan and purpose for our lives is to do it as a community, to do it together. The fact is that I need you, and as much as you probably don't like it, you need me. We need each other in life today. We can't do life alone. That we need the community that is for us. We serve a God. that has created us to fulfill his image. And if his image is this, is community, then how can we project his image to the world and to the lost today if we are not a community? What is more important than the world seeing God? Nothing. If that is the highest importance, then what urgency do we place on our interconnectedness in our commitment to community, relationship, love, respect, and honor to one another? Without community, our world will not see God. 
if that is God's nature and he said, let me make man in my image, and if community is his image and his nature, then the world cannot see him without seeing community in us. Today we've learned that God himself is three in one. That he's three wrapped into one. We've learned that together, when we live and operate in the community that he's placed us, in the family that he's given us, that we can project the image of Christ, the image of God to our world today, that their lives can be changed. We've also learned that together as a family, when we do life together, if one does stray from the pack, that we still love, we still support, and we're still there to help, and we will go and bring them back and support them and help them through those times. But yet there's still more. What does this community look like for us? I want to show you a picture of a church in Barcelona, Spain. The name of that church is La Sagrada Familia Church. A church was designed and was being built by Antoni Gotti. I don't know if I pronounced his name right, but Antoni Gotti. If you look today, there's a recent picture of, of the church there and it's still being built. If you look at the top, there's scaffolding and cranes and they're still working on the church building there. In 1925, Antoni Gotti passed away. But he had been taking stone by stone and began to build that church. Even after his passing, the project has continued. The projection date is this, 2025, that that building will be complete. But there's no guarantees of that. A hundred years past his death, the guess is that the building will be complete then, but nobody knows exactly when it will be complete. Today, as we sit here, I say that Jesus Christ came to this earth. And he began a community of believers that could have a relationship and a fellowship with Jesus Christ. And just as that church there is still being built today. But the only way that it can be built is to continue to bring others into the faith and knowledge of who Jesus Christ really is. If we go back to 1 Peter chapter 2 and look at verse 4 and 5. It says, the chosen stone and his chosen people, the chosen stone... Jesus Christ and his chosen people coming to him as, a, as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also as living stones, everybody say living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. I read that and in that, as I'm reading through Peter and what God gave him to write there, and he's calling us living stones. Basically, he's calling us building material. Of all the things in the world that we could be called, he chooses building materials. And I began to think, God, what in the world, why would you call us a building material? You take a bunch of little stones, and there you go. You have stones, and I guess you can make something out of just a bunch of rocks and stones. But here, Peter's writing about something different. He called us living stones. Peter's talking about those who are redeemed, those who are added and redeemed and saved, those who were purchased by Jesus Christ and have put their faith in him. He says that you're like living and breathing, building material. You are living and breathing, building material. It's very clear of this, that God intends to build something with our lives. If he's going to name us living and breathing, building material, living stone, then he has a purpose. He's planning to build something with our life. Every salvation is a new stone that's admitted to God's building program. Every time someone comes into the kingdom, it takes, goes from an ordinary little rock, an ordinary little stone, to a living stone. Someone who is created for a purpose and have found the creator of their purpose and begin to seek that. They become a living stone. I don't know anybody that walked in this morning and they were told to grab a rock out of the bucket by the door and that were so excited that they got a rock and like, oh my goodness, look how beautiful that is. Baby, look, 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 look what they gave me today at church. And we were so excited about that little rock that is there. But this is what I would say to you today as you sit here in this room. Those of you that know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you're a living stone. And when you begin to look around this room that is filled with living stones, that God is so excited and blessed by the fact that his room is filled with his greatest wonder, which is a community that knows him and serves him and loves him. 
one little ordinary stone by itself is pretty meaningless. But when that stone becomes a living stone, when that stone begins to find purpose in life and begins to find direction in life and begins to fulfill that, and it begins to be added to a community of other living stones, then we begin to fulfill what God's created us to fulfill, which is to what? Let the world see the image of God through us. That lives and hearts can be changed because together as a family, we're making a difference. We're making an impact. You know, if you take every one of these stones and you begin to look at them, many are different colors, many are different shapes, many are different sizes, and they've all been weathered different. The winds and the rains and the rivers have all weathered each stone different, and that's just like our lives. We haven't all faced the same trials in life. We all haven't been through the same storms in life. We all haven't seen all the same rainbows in life, the joys and the happiness. But when you put it together and we begin to live and operate as a community and see what God can do through us in our community, in our lives, and what God is using us to do in our community changes. There's so many movements that are happening today and God is using. One of the main reasons is because he's being reflected in the world through a community. that is shining his image into a culture that have turned their backs on him. In the same way that that church building that we saw was being built one by one, the kingdom is being built. And hopefully our community here is being built. Our prayer is this, that you would catch a hold of the vision that God's given our pastor. I'm not saying that we're not. What I'm saying is in a room filled with people, there are those that may feel disconnected, that don't feel like a part of the family, that don't feel like a part of the community. Maybe there are those that purposely slip in and slip out because you are uncomfortable being a part of the family. I will say for my family, sometimes it's very uncomfortable because there's a wide range of people in my family. And you put us all together and it can become a mess. And sometimes it's uncomfortable for others in this room. Maybe it's uncomfortable to be a part of our family. But what I'm saying to you today is, piece by piece, God is building his kingdom. Number one, are you a living stone today? Have you moved from just an ordinary rock into a living stone by faith and knowledge in Jesus Christ? And you've accepted that and spoken that to him. Number two, are you connected? Are you a part of the community and family God's given us? Are you serving here? Are you a part of the community somehow? Are you connected in a connect group, in a small group somehow? Are you connected to what God is doing here at Greenville First? He's building a community here for this city. Not just a church in a city, but for the city. To reach the city. To reach the world. Can we walk around and shine Jesus by ourselves? I'm sure we can. But if we're created in the image of our creator who is a community in himself, then to fully project the image of our creator, we have to be a community. We can see it over and over and over how numbers together can accomplish so much more than individuals. So we pull it together as a community. Would you bow your heads with me for a moment, Father, in the name of Jesus. As we sit in this room, those who haven't come to a knowledge of and a confession of who you are, who Jesus Christ is that gave his life for us. Lord, they're still a part of a community which is not the community of living stones.
Lord, I pray today that they would move from just a normal stone into the living stone realm. And Father, that with courage and boldness in their hearts, that they would take a stand and say, today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I become a part of the community of the family of God here at Greenville First. For others in this room that, Father, just may feel disconnected for whatever reason, maybe on purpose or maybe through circumstances of life or whatever it may be, that, God, that they would see the importance of being a part of the community of God here in our family and how together, as you place vision in our hearts for our city, for our country and for our world, God, together that we would go and we would share and we would shine the image of Christ to our world that they could move from just an ordinary building material to a living, breathing stone that you're creating and using for your building program in this life. God, for those that are in this room today that may feel like the lone buffalo. The enemy has his grips in them today. Lord, may we together come around them as their family, as their community, as their church, and begin to be their strength. As you rescue them, may we be their strength today. Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts today. Hey, with nobody looking around, please, just out of respect. Sometimes I don't like doing this. Today, I feel this is probably the best way. With nobody looking around, would you, if you're sitting in this room today and you'd say, Pastor Jimmy, just an ordinary stone today, but I want to find life. I want to become a living stone. I, I've never accepted Jesus Christ into my life. But today I want to. Would you just raise your hand so I can pray for you? I promise I won't embarrass you. Anybody today? Maybe you sit in this room today and you say, hey, I love Jesus. I'm trying to serve him with all of my heart. But just like that lone buffalo, somehow I've found myself away from the pack, away from the community, and I just need to be surrounded today by my family. I just need a little love and a little support today with nobody looking around. If that's you, would you raise your hand just so I can pray for you? Thank you, darling. Thank you. Anybody else today? Would you stand to your feet with me for a moment? There are times in my family we have disagreements and we have arguments. And there are times in my family that it just seems dysfunctional. Sometimes I feel on the outs. Sometimes I'll probably make others feel on the outs, and that's human life and nature. But in the end, I know my family loves me. In the end, I know that they'll do anything and everything for me. And as you stand in here today, if you raised your hand for either one of those things today, you're surrounded by a family. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be embarrassed of. It's just the fact that today you'll be surrounded by those that love you. For those of you that raised your hand or maybe you should have and you didn't, we just want to love on you and pray for you. And again, go to the Father on your behalf and welcome you back or welcome you in. Or again, just bring reassurance to you that we're still here and we love you as a family. So would you just step out into the aisle and make your way here so we can pray for you and love on you for a moment if that's you? If you raise your hand or should have, I know it's hard. Does that mean you're going to hell?
will know this, even though you don't move, is this. We still love you. We're still surrounded by a family that loves you and cares for you and there for you. And I know who you are, and I'll pray for you. And your family that doesn't know who you are will pray for you. But find yourself in that place. you're living what you were created for, to be a part of a community that shines the image of God. We're going to worship just a moment. we going to sing this song and worship. Just ask you to open your heart to God and speak to Him today. Father, again, you're taking each one of us as a living stone and you're building your church. God, we, just like the church in Barcelona, Spain, God, we don't know. Many have ideas and theories of when you're coming back. But God, ultimately, in the end, we don't know when it's complete. But Lord, may we as a community, as a family here at Greenville First, add as many living stones to your building as we can. May we be about your business. God, may our focus be living and serving you and shining you into a dark world and a dark culture of today. God, may we walk out of this room with a passion and a desire to fulfill your calling in our lives, your purpose. And God, may our lives and our hearts be a living and walking and breathing example of who you are to our world today. And Father, we could continue to build until you come.